Okay, so this is a really important video that we're going to cover, uh, which is unit four of the beginners section, which is about learning formulas and functions. So as I mentioned in the last video, you know, most people, what they use Excel for is really mathematical equations. It's, you know, working on your personal finance. It's preparing a budget. It's preparing an Excel model. It's, you know, working with a data set to understand it when maybe chart it and, you know, figure out what the average is and, you know, and use that data to come up with a decision and help with the decision-making process, whether it's, you know, do we make this investment? Should we buy this business? You know, am I within budget? Are we a profitable, you know, company? These are all the kind of things that we use Excel for. There's unlimited uses, um, but all pretty much all of them use formulas and functions. So, you know, that's, that's the introduction to Excel and formulas, but in essence, they're mathematical equations. Right. So, for example, average, you know, is really just saying at the back of it, you know, let's sum all the data, divide by the number of the count of the number of data, and that gets you your average. But Excel makes it really simple for us because they've just generated all these specific word formulas. So instead of having to calculate the add up all of these numbers, divide by all of these numbers, with Excel, for example, you can just get, say type in in English equals average, and then brackets and then select the range, and then Excel will just tell you what the average is. But there's, re there's really thousands of Excel formulas that we can go through with you. Some of the key areas that we can talk about is, you know, what are the formulas that add, subtract, you know, multiply and divide, um, some functions as well as non-contiguous ranges, which we'll talk about later, um, averages, finding a maximum value, a minimum value, and then we'll talk about kind of some of the error messages that you might get, what's a what-if formula and start talking about some more complex formulas as well but we'll probably try and leave some of those complex formulas for later videos so in the intermediate and advanced we'll cover formulas there as well um, but the more advanced ones that you need so let's just start off with the basic ones and once you're comfortable with those you know watch our later segments in intermediate and advanced and to start to learn those so what's an example of you know an intermediate formula like a sum if um, an index match, an X lookup. These, these are kind of the intermediate formulas. We'll start off with things like sum, average, min, max, you know, simple to understand, right? So let's get started. <clears throat> Just drag this over here. So let's get started. So what is a formula first and foremost? So as you can see here, let, well, let's, let's start off with an easy one. Let's start off with a sum. So let's... So this is from our Excel spreadsheet, which has you know hundreds of the key formulas that you need to know, along with kind of explanations, along with you know examples as to how to use it and things like that. So sum, this is a really basic one. It's basically adding numbers together. So let's start off with an Excel formula. What is it? It's a mathematical equation using input data. So you can see how you can tell when there's a formula because when you select on a cell in the formula bar at the top, it has a very distinct equal sign before it. And most formulas also have a characteristic of text, which tells Excel what the formula is that you're using. For example, a sum, an average, a min, a max, whatever it may be. And finally, a range. So a range is what are we actually applying the formula to? Which numbers do we want to sum, for example? So in this case, the range is equal to C4 to E4, which is these cells, as you can see, highlighted. And that's the benefit of Excel, is when you double click on it, it brings up a visual representation of the formula. So what exactly are you summing? The other aspects of it, we can see there's an X equal sign, so we know it's a formula, and we know that the formula we're doing is a sum. So we've got three numbers here, 100, 200, 300. What we can do is, if we wanna add them up, we can go equals, so type there, add in your sum formula and as you can see as soon as you start typing an s or a u excel says are you thinking of one of these formulas so it's a good way of kind of seeing what options are available and if you select it for example sum it tells you what the formula does and if it's a more complicated formula it tells you how to use it as well so let's let's double click there now it's sum has been applied and it's also applied the first bracket which is what we need to do to apply to our range so this is saying, well, what numbers do you want to apply to it? And it tells us how to use the formula. So it's saying, type in your first number, type in your second number, 
and you see how it's like dot 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 that means you can do that basically as long as you want right so we can go c4 d4 and e4 so we can select it see how it's kind of overriding because it's a long formula the other way we can do it is just go type in e4 so now our formula is showing up the output which is the sum of this plus this plus this equals 600 so it's a little bit of a slow way of doing it and i think a lot of beginners especially when there's a lot of numbers what they'll do is i'll go equal sum they'll go this one they'll go this one they'll go this one they'll go this one this one this, one. this is really slow we don't want to do this especially when you're just going straight up and down it's a really slow way of doing it what you do instead is you go equal sum and then you drag you i'm clicking and i'm holding down the clicking so you can see that box is like moving to indicate that I can change it. And then I'm just dragging it across much faster, especially when you're dealing with a big data set. So let's just put in some random numbers here. I'm just putting in a, a, a formula. So we've got a lot of numbers here. So let's say we want to sum this whole column. We go equals sum. So you don't have to go that plus that plus that don't do that right it's going to take you forever what you do is keeping in mind the lesson we went through in earlier videos about how to navigate excel we go sum first bracket then use our keyboard to select the first number and then what we do is we hold down control shift down selects the whole row much faster okay we can add a little bit of formatting if you like just make it a little bit neater, right? Maybe center these numbers as well. So you select the center button there and middle. And now what we can do is we can drag this formula across. So select it with your mouse or your keyboard, press control C to copy it or copy, but I prefer keyboard. So when you've copied it, you can see that the um, select box is kind of moving like it's alive. And then what you do is you hold down shift and move your right keyboard button to the right so the range we want to apply the formula to and then we just paste it so press your paste up here or keyboard which is preferred control V now the formula has applied across pretty cool huh much faster okay so that is the sum formula we also want to talk about formulas that subtract I think this is a key one so you know you don't necessarily need to go minus Okay, so let's say we want to go um, this number minus these three. So there's a couple ways we could do it. Number one is we could go, let's do our formula down here. Let's go equals that. And now what we want to do is we just want to add the minus sign like that. So we're going to go that minus that minus that. That's one way of doing this, okay? If you, if, you, if you want to minus lots of them, it's going to be a very slow process. So I'll show you a faster way later on. But this will, this will do the same thing, right? So it's going to minus those numbers. So it's saying that number minus that minus that minus that minus that minus that minus that. So it's a good, good how it's like a visual representation. You can see exactly which number is which. So see, see this one's a blue over here. So I know that this one is representing 03 over here. But a faster way of doing that is to actually take our learnings from what we just discussed there, which is a sum. So another way of doing this would be to do that number, 03, minus the sum of 05 to 012. It's the same thing, and it's much faster. So let's try doing it in the next one across. So we can go equals that number there, minus, and this is where we go sum we don't need to add in an equal sign again because we only need one across the whole formula. Otherwise, you might run into some errors. Um, the equal sign is really just to tell Excel that you're typing in a formula and not text. So once that, you don't need to use, use it again. So we can go minus sum, and now we select the range that we want to subtract from P3 because at the end of the day, this minus is going to apply to all of the sum formula over here. So this is the same thing it's the same thing and I'll prove it to you because I'll, I'll make the numbers exactly the same by going 
equals that, the former is equals that, so the output is the same as that, and just dragging it down. So I can also just, so there's a few ways you can drag it down. You can just double click there on the box. You can copy and paste it down. Yeah, so you can see these two numbers are the same. So these are numbers are all the same. So what I'm gonna to prove to you is that the sum of these is the same as the sum of, did I get the, yeah. So you can see these numbers are the same. So it's exactly the same to do that minus that minus that minus that minus that as it is to do that minus the sum of these. It's the same thing. So that's that's minus formulas. Okay, so let's next let's talk about working with formulas that multiply and divide. Okay, so um, when we do multiplication formulas in Excel, there's really two symbols that you need to note. There's the divide symbol, which is essentially the um, slash one. So it looks like this, slash. And then there's the multiplication one, which looks like this. It's the asterisk one. It looks like that. So let's say we've got two numbers. Um, I'll just choose these two numbers over here and highlight them for you. I want that number times by that number. The way we do that in Excel is very simple. We just go equals that, select it, and then asterisk, and then that. And what that does is it multiplies the two numbers together and we get our 648. So you'll notice that, yeah, I just did an equal sign and then selected it and then multiplication sign and then the other cell that I want to multiply it by. So it's the same, oops, I did it in the wrong way. I'll paste, put it underneath this asterisk sign. It's the same if you want to divide them, right? Same formula, we'll do equals that but instead of the asterisk, we'll do that symbol, the divide, and we'll do by R24. So we'll go equals that, divide by that, and this should give us our answer, 0 0.745. So that's how you do multiply and divide formulas. Okay, so we've talked about some functions. There is also the way to do it with a plus symbol, but you know, don't worry too much about that because um, you know, with sum, it does the same thing. So if we were to go equals that plus that, right, like that, that is the same thing as going equals sum, but it's better to learn the sum formula because then you can do lots of things like select ranges and select individual cells and also like a lot of data like this. Okay, so the next one that I'm gonna go through with you is the average formula. So average formula is basically, let's go to the Excel tab which covers this. So got another tip for navigating Excel is if you right click these arrows, it gives you the list of all the tabs that you've got down the bottom. So we can quickly go to average and navigate there. So average formula, pretty straightforward. It's equals average, so type out average, and then select the range, and it'll give you the average of those numbers. So let's try it ourselves. We'll go equals average, like that, and you can see it's popping up, and it tells you what it does, the arithmetic mean, and if you select on it, it tells you how to use it. So bracket, put the first number, the second number, and then dot, 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 as many numbers as you want. So we, that means we can select a range. I'll select those ones right bracket and you can see the average of that is 29 perfect another way of checking the average and this only works for three formulas which is average count which tells you the number of cells selected and sum so average is one of those default numbers um, so that's another way of checking the average okay let's talk about finding a maximum value and a minimum value next so let's say we've got our data set over here actually you know what let's go back to our sum tab or we can go to our min tab over here. So there's two formulas you need to know for finding a maximum and a minimum. Um, and there's a number of reasons why you might wanna find that, right? You might be looking through your bank statement and you wanna find the highest payment that you've paid out. So you might find a, let's say that's a, um, a negative number. So you'd use the minimum formula. We wanna find what that biggest number is. So we'd select the range, we type our minimum formula in and it'll come back with a number that was the smallest or negatives are small so that would come up with the biggest negative number let's say you want to find your biggest sales month 
in it for a company. We can use our max formula, which finds the maximum value. So you go equals max, select the range, let's say all of your revenue data, and it's gonna come back with the biggest one. So maybe your biggest sale, your biggest customer, your biggest revenue month. It's a really important formula. We use it all the time. So let's go through the min one first. They're pretty, pretty much the same approach to them. So you can see an example here. We've got, we've got five numbers here. When we find, I want to find the smallest one in there. So what they've done is they've gone equals min, and selected the range C4 to G4. And here's a working example. So we double click this, and we can say minimum C4 to G4. It's highlighted. And the minimum number is 100, which makes sense because if you look at these numbers, you can say, okay, that one there is the smallest, 100. It also works with other things like dates, for example. So, you know, we've got some different dates here. We can find the smallest date in here by going equals min, select the range. Smallest date is January 1998, which is this one here. So it's the earliest date. And now it might be helpful because sometimes dates are hard to read on a page. So Excel can just find it for you. Or maybe you're working with a very large data set and Excel just finds it very quickly for you rather than having to find out for yourself. It also reduces the risk level because you might be looking through it and eyeballing it and looking for the smallest one, but actually you actually haven't seen one that's right at the end. So I actually didn't see this one myself because it was, right, it was the very first one and I was kind of scanning through these last ones and thinking, okay, well, the, probably the earliest one is probably this July or March one, but I didn't actually see this. So it reduces the risk of error by using formulas. So a couple of examples here. What's the minimum sales by region and by month? So we can just go equals min, select that, and then drag the formula down. And we can see the smallest one is in March in North, March in South, Feb in East, which is 2000, and 4000, which is West in Feb. And then within that range, you can also do minimum again by saying, well, what's the the, the minimum within all of these, and that's gonna be 2000, which is probably this one here, which is your east in February. So that's the lowest across all regions across the group. So it's the same thing for max. I won't go through it in detail. It's just substituting the formula and putting max instead of min. And within the same numbers, it's just gonna find the highest one. So for example, 800 for numbers, December 98 for dates. And within the region, 12,000 is the highest across all so that's maximum. Okay, um, let's just see if there's anything else we need to cover. Um, if you do get an error messages, now there's a couple of kind of key errors worth kind of talking about. Um, so what are the key errors? So div error is a, a very common one and that's basically when you try and divide something by zero. So if we go equals five divided by zero, obviously if you don't know math, you can't divide anything by zero, you get a div error issue, uh, error. So to fix that, basically just don't divide anything by zero and you won't have this issue. So the next one is name, and this is basically when um, you're trying to sum like text or something like that. It means that you're not actually um, summing values and you get this name error. So ref is another really common error. We get this a lot when we're working with workbooks that have links to external workbooks, which as I mentioned in earlier videos, we want to avoid at all costs. We can do that by avoiding having any links. So if you go to the data ribbon and go edit links, if it's grayed out, that's good. It means you've got no links to another workbook. So what do we mean by links? It means that if I had another workbook open, like book one, and I had some numbers in here, so let's say, all these numbers over here, and I was linking one of these equals to my other workbook. Let's say I was pulling my dates or numbers from over here. You can see now that when I select this, it's linking to that name of the other Excel spreadsheet, the cell, um, etc. And that means now when I go to the data tab, edit links, you can see it's linking to this other spreadsheet. We don't want this because if I were to close the other spreadsheet, we would get the horrible ref error because Excel doesn't know where to get the data from because you've closed the other workbook. So what we do is we avoid linking to other workbooks and if there is links, we break links like so. And that just hard codes the number. I'll just close out of this one. 
um, what are the other ones? Value errors. So that's basically when you're trying to, again, you're trying to work with text and you're using a mathematical formula on text. Um, for example, equals sum Allen. Excel doesn't know what to do with that because you can't sum text. So it's going to give you a value error. Um, and then finally, if you have a formula which has a NA, it means that it's not there's nothing wrong with what you've done, but it means the formula itself, how you've structured the table, the formula doesn't make sense to Excel. So just have a look at what you've put in here. You might probably made an error in how the formula actually works. Okay, cool. So that's pretty much all the errors that you need to look out for. Um, there is a way of kind of correcting errors, especially kind of div zero errors, if you wanted to apply a formula across a large data set. And maybe some of them have zeros in there and you just don't want it to show div error. There is a formula you can use called an if error. And it's basically saying if there is an error, put in this value. So I often do this in models where I go if error and then bracket zero, sorry, comma zero. And that basically, if there's an error, I just basically convert it to a zero instead. So that's a common way of getting around it. Um, now, finally, there's this thing up here called what if formulas, and I won't go through this in detail because this is probably more of an advanced formula, but it's a way of basically doing trial and error. You can do things like if we wanted, um, let's find a good example, average. Let's say we've got this data set here. We've got our average of across this is 29. We want to say, okay, well, what does Tuesday need to be for this average to be 30? So that's an example of a what if analysis. So you can click this, go through goal seek within here. Um, and basically Excel will trial lots of different numbers to figure out what number to goes into Tuesday. So in the background, it's going to go, okay, what's 32? What about 34? What about 36, 38? Until it finds a number that gets that to 30. So that's basically what a what if analysis is. It's too advanced for beginners. So that's the level of explanation I'll give you for that one. But in the advanced and intermediate, we'll go through that in more detail and show you how to use it. But other than that, I think we've covered all the key things we wanted to, to discuss in the beginners section on learning formulas, including what is a formula. We've been through formulas that, that add and subtract, multiply and divide. We've been through sum functions. Oh, probably one thing that we can cover is sum for non-contiguous ranges. So let's just quickly cover that before we finish off. So what is a non-contiguous range? It's basically when we want to sum, let's say, everything except for Thursday. See how it's not connected? That means it's a non-contiguous range. Very easy to do. Instead of going equals sum across all of these, what we do is we just go, we select Monday to Wednesday. And what we do is we go comma. Because now Excel is saying, okay, we're going to sum these numbers in this range, comma, and these numbers in this range. So we can select another one now, these ones over here, add the end bracket to finish off the formula and press enter. And you will get 181, which is the sum of all of these ones except for Thursday. So that's basically sum with a non-contiguous range. Okay, but other than that, we've covered off um, finding a max and min value, averages, We've set the grounds for more complex formulas a little bit later on in later videos. And we've discussed at a very high level what if formulas and error messages, but we'll cover those in more advanced videos. But that gives you a taste for Excel formulas, what they do, how to write them, and some very basic ones. Cool, so in the next one, we'll talk about selecting cell ranges. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.